this morning for our communion message. We're going to be reading out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. So if you would turn there, you can read along with me. In these passages, we're going to focus on Christ's perfect sacrifice for believers and how he gave his life so that we could be reconciled to God. If you do not have a Bible, there are some men up front that would be happy to give you one. If you need one, please raise your hand as they come down the aisles. And if you don't have a Bible, you may take this one with you as a gift from Grace Bible Church. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. Let's read together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Not all these things, now all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, but and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God. Let's pray. Father, we we thank you for that great exchange, that he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf. And in exchange, we got the righteousness of God. How amazing that is. Amazing is the gift of grace, a gift that we could never repay, but we are so privileged to have. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. In these passages, we see the sufficiency of Christ to reconcile sinful man to a holy God. All who possess Christ have access to every spiritual blessing, and Christ alone fulfills the deepest longing of our hearts. In verse 17, we see the phrase, if anyone is in Christ, Paul is describing what God has done in Christ as an expression of love and a means of reconciliation for believers. But what does it mean to be in Christ? This phrase can mean several different things. That one belongs to Christ that one lives in submission to Christ, that one is united with Christ, that one is a part of the body of Christ. Verse 17 also says, he is a new creature, which implies that person is a new being, born again as a result of the gift of salvation that comes from believing and trusting in Christ's death. And resurrection. Salvation changes who we are. It changes our affections, our wants, and desires. It also changes our purposes and our commitments. As believers, we see the world in a new way when we are joined to Christ. Just as the last part of verse 17 says, old things The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. We are now dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ. God has delivered us from the bondage of sin. We are no longer separated from God. As Paul tells us in Colossians 1, he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, to God be all the glory. In verses 18 through 21, Paul shifts from the new creature to what God has done in his redemptive plan for reconciling the world to himself. Paul says in verse 18, now all these things are from God, referring back to what we just read in 
verse 17. Paul is making it clear that the new creature is exclusively from God and that man has done nothing to be reconciled to God. So how is it possible to be reconciled to God? Look again at verse 18. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. God is solely the force behind the redemption of man and reconciliation comes totally from God's initiative. We are not reconciled to God by what we did, but it is through Christ. God gave us the privilege of being reconciled to him through Christ's death. Christ is our only means of our reconciliation to God. At the end of verse 18, it says, we are given the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation means restoration of relationships and of peace where before there had been hostility and alienation. Reconciliation with God must also include the removal of the offense which caused the disruption of peace and harmony. One author notes, Recon reconciliation requires both sides to acknowledge the wrong and for the injured party to let go of the pain. He goes on to say, God has confronted us with our transgressions, but has taken the initiative in Christ to resolve the problem our transgressions have created. God has let go of the pain of our willful rebellion and does not count our trespasses against us. But it remains for us to accept that we have done wrong, to repent of it, and to accept, accept God's offer of friendship. To have a ministry of reconciliation, as noted in verse 18, means God, that God will continue to act through believers to proclaim the gospel. Believers have the privilege and responsibility to share the good news of the gospel and to call others to be reconciled to God. This is such a great and awesome privilege and responsibility that we have. Verse 19 says that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us, the word of reconciliation. Reconciliation begins with God and is made possible by Christ who removed the barrier between a holy God and a sinful man. World, in this verse, refers to people of every ethnic group without distinction. The word reconciliation used by Paul in this passage refers to truth, that is found in the gospel, the good news. And in verse 20, we see the role of the believer. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. We are ambassadors for Christ. We present the words of God to unbelieving sinners, urging them to accept the gospel, begging them to repent of their sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We long to tell people of the amazing opportunity that is available to be made right with God through Jesus. Lastly, in verse 21, we see what had to take place so that we can be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This is the heart of the gospel. What does it mean? God poured out all of his wrath on his righteous son for all the sins of those who would believe he lived a perfect life, the life that we could not live. And yet he took the blame for all that we did. 
God treated Jesus as though he lived your life. He became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. All of God's wrath fell completely on Jesus. If you are here today and you don't have a personal relationship with Christ, please listen to how one author summarizes what you have heard this morning. We are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were begging through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Jesus is the sufficient and perfect offering who bears the full wrath of God for our sins. God is the reconciler, and he will forgive your sins if you come to him in faith and repentance. God loves a broken and contrite heart. Jesus said in John 6, 40, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. Behold the Son and believe in him today. Believers, please celebrate with me the free gift of salvation and remember what it cost our Savior. Please take this time to focus on confession, confession of sin, and our union with Christ. And for those of you who are not believers, please allow the elements to pass you by. This is a time for believers to rejoice in their relationship with Jesus. Men, please come and serve us. You may take communion on your own when you're ready. And in a few minutes, I'll return and close this time in prayer.